A good character is one that changes, but what makes a hero develop, and how does he or she grow? Let's take a look at some of cinema's best emotional journeys with our picks for the top 10 best character arcs of all time. Let's take a look at one of the most basic character arcs there is, becoming a hero, wherein a decidedly non-hero person grows to unleash their inner hero, that when faced with difficulty and evil, an inner light shines through. Like Luke Skywalker and Sarah Connor and Ellen Ripley and Neo, characters who made like that Hercules song you're about to have stuck in your head. However, we'll feed our need for complexity by handing this slot to Kikuchio from Seven Samurai. Kikuchiyo begins as a false samurai, a tag-along with an oversized sword and a forged family tree, a triangle on the banner of circles. He is rejected by the samurai but won't be shaken off. But by the end of their mission, Kikuchiyo has proven himself their peer and earned an honorable burial. And the arc to get there is fantastic. It is a pitting of pridefulness versus self-sacrifice, of noble dreams versus their difficult realities, all set against the backdrop of a peasant's orphan past. And while his lack of discipline costs lives, his eventual self-sacrifice redeems him, tragically, as the samurai he always wanted to be. Next up at number 9, we want to honor films that put their characters through the ringer and force them to learn lessons about how to be better. This is the moral arc, the journey that turns a scoundrel into a saint, or at least something a little closer. It is founded on the assumption that deep down, human nature is essentially good, and that if a character fails morally enough and is punished by the world in the process, they will learn a better, happier way. Think Phil Connors from Groundhog Day, Ed Norton in American History X, a little bit of Oscar Schindler from Schindler's List, and Terry Malloy from On the Waterfront. Darth Vader makes a big turnaround in Return of the Jedi, but for our number nine, we prefer Jules' arc from Pulp Fiction. Do you read the Bible, Ringo? Not regularly, no. Well, there's this passage I got memorized. Ezekiel 25, 17. The path of the righteous man is beset on all sides by the inequities of the selfish and the tyranny of evil men. Maybe it means you're the evil man and I'm the righteous man. And Mr. Nine Millimeter here, he's the shepherd protecting my righteous ass in the valley of darkness. Or it could mean you're the righteous man and I'm the shepherd. And it's the world that's evil and selfish. Now, I'd like that. But that shit ain't the truth. The truth is you're the weak and I'm the tyranny of evil men. But I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd. In a movie that is so popularly non-linear, it is perhaps the straightforwardness of Jules' arc that is so surprising, chronicling a number of his encounters with violence that served to convince him to give it up. First, he murders. Then, he's miraculously spared. Then, his partner accidentally kills an innocent man. Then, two robbers hold him at gunpoint and force him to decide between killing them and sparing them. He chooses the latter. And perhaps it was divine intervention or a moment of clarity, but Pulp Fiction does a wonderful job of walking us quietly through his revelation by parts on the way to becoming a righteous man. Somewhere halfway between becoming a hero and growing in moral character is the reluctant hero. They don't want to be a hero. They don't want to sacrifice. They'd rather look out for themselves and their self-interest. But their self-interest is eventually confronted by an inflexible inner moral strength, and it is the moral strength that prevails because they were a hero inside all along. This is Han Solo and Jake Giddies. It's Private Trip from Glory, Weasler from The Lives of Others, and our number eight pick, could it be anyone other than Rick Blaine from Casablanca? I just sometimes wonder if it's worth all this. I mean, what you're fighting for. You might as well question why we breathe. If we stop breathing, we'll die. If we stop fighting our enemies, the world will die. Now, what of it? It'll be out of his misery. You know how you sound, Monsieur Blaine? Like a man who's trying to convince himself of something he doesn't believe in his heart. When we first meet Rick, he wants nothing less than to be a hero. He'll settle for businessmen, or loner, or hell, even a drunkard, but not a hero. However, it's not in the cards for him. And as time goes by, we learn that he wasn't always this way. He used to be a patriot, a freedom fighter, risking his neck for the cause. But he got his heart broken and decided the world might not be worth saving. But it takes the same woman who broke his heart to soften it, and we get to watch gleefully as he reveals himself to be the hero he tried so hard not to be. 
Sometimes it's not so much something that needs to be learned or gained or taught as something a character is holding onto that they need to let go. Kevin Spacey builds to a breaking point in American Beauty, Gene Dealman has had enough in that movie we talked about last time that I couldn't pronounce, and Adam Sandler overcomes something big in Punch Drunk Love. Joaquin Phoenix in The Master, Fassbender in Shame, and Mickey Rourke in The Wrestler all set out to change their nature and seek redemption of some sort. But for our number seven, we think that Jack Nicholson as Bobby Dupea in Five Easy Pieces takes the proverbial cake. I don't know if you'd be particularly interested in hearing anything about me. My life, most of it doesn't add up to much that I could relate as a way of life that you'd approve of. I move around a lot. Not because I'm looking for anything, really, but... Because... I'm getting away from things that get bad if I stay. The role that proved Jack Nicholson was a star, Bobby Dupea is a fantastic character portrait of an upper-class-born classical pianist who has given it up for a life of oil work and slumming. But when his sister tells him his father has had a stroke, he heads back home, resentfully dragging along his girlfriend before hiding her in a motel. He gets home, falls in love, gets rejected, gets in a fight, and tries to talk with his father who can't say a word, or won't. So he does the only thing that's left. He walks away. We're not quite sure where he's going, but he's reached his breaking point and decided to leave it all behind. Whatever life he had before, he's given it up now and is no longer the same person for it. Sometimes arcs happen in tandem. Two characters grow and change and evolve, not just in a vacuum, but with respect to each other and their relationship. We're not talking about the traditional rom-com arc where love blossoms and we realize the other person was all we ever wanted anyways. No, for this slot, we're more interested in films like Blue Valentine, Scenes from a Marriage, and The Before Trilogy. But we're sticking with Linklater and his portrait of an entire family through time with Boyhood for our number six pick. You know what I'm realizing? My life is just gonna go like that. A series of milestones. Getting married, having kids, getting divorced. The time that we thought you were dyslexic. We missed the train on when Boyhood became so popular to hate upon, but don't worry, we picked up on it when we let you know it was one of our 50 favorite films in a recent list. And let's set aside whether it's a good film, or a great film, or an unwelcome dog turd of a gimmick on the front lawn of cinema for just a minute so we can look at how its characters evolve. For all the emotional growth an actor can do on screen in a typical three-month span, there's nothing like actual time to really kick it up a notch. And when you put four of them together, pinging off each other and changing in response, you watch as parents wound each other, build households in their own ways and remarry, affecting their kids who react themselves, grow up, test their independence, and force their parents to change in turn, and you end up with a living, breathing dynamic picture of a family unit. But character arcs aren't always quite so arky. Sometimes they look a little more like an unwavering line. One of the fun things about the expectation that all characters will grow is that it can be immensely powerful to subvert the expectation and serve up a character that doesn't. Think Young Adult, or American Psycho, or Taxi Driver, or The Searchers, or Memento. No, for our number five, we're going with Alex DeLarge from A Clockwork Orange. I was cured, all right. A Clockwork Orange's central question is one of change. Can a violent nature be changed through forceful means? And if it can, should it be? And after torturing Alex with the Ludovico technique until he's sick at the thought of violence, Kubrick seems to think it might not matter so much. Because while the entire plot is focused around getting this violent criminal to change his ways, in the end, he ends up exactly where he started, with the same impulses, thoughts, and mischievous grin arced full circle right back to the beginning. At a certain point, we must all face our mortality, and films have put characters through this last and hardest of tests to many different results. It's a Wonderful Life and Persona track characters deciding that they don't want to face death, while Amour, Grave of the Fireflies, and Synecdoche, New York all watch their protags either shrink or grow when faced with their slowly diminishing days. However, for our number five, we think that Wild Strawberries is an absolute masterpiece of character in the face of death. Lovely Strafford. Strafford. Det gamla vanliga, antar jag. Gamla vanliga? Ja visst, ensamheten. Ensamheten? Mm. Just det, ensamheten. Finns det ingen nål? Fråga inte mig. Jag vet ingenting om sånt. 
Wild Strawberries is a road trip film in more ways than one. In the literal sense, an aging Dr. Isaac Borg takes a trip with his daughter-in-law to accept an honorary degree. But along the way, the journey leads him on a tour through his dreams and memories in an untangling of who he really is and how he came to be that way, and in so doing, to confront his impending death. It is the psychological journey of a man and his self-reckoning in his final act. Beginning in a place of guilt and resolving itself in some small amount of solace and acceptance, Wild Strawberries is as brutal, painful, beautiful, and honest a portrait of the twilight hours of life as was ever shot. Closing in at number three, we have The Rise to Power. The journey a character takes from average, content man or woman to the great heights of strength and power, and often the corruption and violence that comes with it. Zero Dark Thirty does this subtly, A Prophet does it beautifully, and Rise of the Planet of the Apes does it animally. But for our number three, it would be criminal not to recognize Michael Corleone for his ascent to the family throne in The Godfather. What are you gonna do? Nice college boy, huh? They want to get mixed up in the family business? Huh? Now you want to gun down a police captain one because he slapped you in the face a little bit? Huh? What do you think, this is the army where you shoot him a mile away? You gotta get him close like this, but a bing, you blow their brains all over your nice cyber league suit. From saintly war hero to family leader of quiet cruelty, Michael's transformation is a cinema legend. It is the slow, seductive corruption of a moral man. Dragged to his father's bedside by an assassination attempt and into the family business in the process, his story is the opposite of Jules. Attempt after attempt at the lives of him and his family wear away at his moral fiber until what's left is the most ruthless and powerful man in organized crime, and probably the greatest rise to power put on film. Counting down to number two is our last pick's Jungian Shadow, the descent into madness, depravity, and death. The characters following this arc show us our greatest fears about ourselves, that we may fall and fall and fall and learn that there is no rock bottom on which to land. These character arcs come from Aguirre, Amadeus, 8mm, The Deer Hunter, and Chronicle. From Black Narcissus, I Live in Fear, and the takes on Macbeth from Polanski and Kuwasawa. Kubrick's The Shining is this arc to a T, but we've already got a Nicholson on our list, and besides, we'd rather spend this slot talking about Gina Rowland's Mabel Longuet from a woman under the influence. She'd climb the walls, break dishes, scream. Mabel's a delicate, sensitive woman. Mabel's not crazy. She's unusual. She's not crazy, so don't say she's crazy. Gina Rollins was nominated for Best Actress for her role here and more than deserved it. Her performance is one for the ages. In the beginning, Mabel is perhaps just a little strange, but what follows is one of the most brilliantly acted unravelings in the history of cinema. It is not quite as extreme as other breakdowns that led to homicidal rampages or other such insanities, but it is certainly one of the best traced, with painful details the entire way down to a six-month commitment and beyond. The most terrifying of human truths is that as we grow, so must we someday perish. And often, the very key to our undoing is that same seed from which we grow. So for our number one slot, we call this the rise and fall. This is Barry Lyndon, and Scarlett O'Hara, and T.E. Lawrence. It's Jake LaMotta, and Henry Hill, and Jordan Belfort, and Ace Rothstein. Are you seeing a pattern here? They're all brilliant and incredible character studies. But for our number one pick, we've got to go back to the OG of character epics. The one rise and fall to rule them all. Orson Welles' titular Citizen Kane. If you could have found out what that rosebud meant, I bet that would have explained everything. No, I don't think so. No. Mr. Kane was a man who got everything he wanted and then lost it. Maybe rosebud was something he couldn't get or something he lost. Anyway, it wouldn't have explained anything. I don't think any word can explain a man's life. No, I guess rosebud is just a piece in a jigsaw puzzle. Missing piece. Citizen Kane is a study in character arts, a journalistic dissection of a titanic man, an investigation into how someone became exactly who he was in all his forms. Child, leader, magnate, politician, husband, failure, recluse. Loosely based on the life of William Randolph Hearst, a man who tried desperately to prevent its release, Citizen Kane is Orson Welles' masterpiece, crafting a monument to an American Icarus, flying too high and lending proof to Fitzgerald's claim that there are no second acts in American lives. The scope is enormous and the execution is masterful as it connects its every turn to its central spine, tying its beginning to its end, practically writing the book on how to create a good character arc, which is why we think it's the best of all time. Of course, character arcs get a lot more detail than this, but this should get you started. So, who did we leave out? Did you disagree with any of our picks? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more Cinefix videos.